Hey guys, hope you are all doing well. And today, we've got a replay for you in the T-34. The, not the uh, tier five Russian medium tank, the uh, tier eight American premium. So uh, who remembers when this thing was tier nine? Because even I don't because I registered my account shortly after it was changed out for a tier 8 premium when the uh, T110E5 was introduced and the T30 was moved to a tank destroyer. A little bit of World of Tanks history for you right there. So yeah, the T34. Um, why am I playing this tank in 2020? <laughs> it's um, falling off a little bit, let's say. So back in like 2013, something like that, you didn't really, there was not a lot of premium tanks in the game, remember? Um, especially when it came to tier 8, you basically had the KV-5, the IS-6, the uh, 112, the Type 59, the T-34, the Lerva, I'm sure I'm missing another one, uh, maybe the Jagdtiger 88 and the Super Pershing as well. God damn it, back then those were the only tier 8 premiums in the game. And now we've got more tier 8 premiums than we have it, entire tech trees worth of tanks. So, yeah, while the tanks, are, the monetization has changed a little bit in the last couple of years. And back then, tier 8 premiums were not made purposely bad, but they were just a little bit worse than their counterparts. But the benefit was that they made credits, which was massive back then because obviously. You didn't have the personal stock. You didn't have the. Uh, you didn't have credit boosters. You didn't have all these um, skirmishes where you can just get a crap ton of credits in just an hour. No, it, back then you had to grind in this game. Like if you look back at your account and look at some of the tanks that you first grinded. Like you're looking at like a hundred gains plus or tier nines and maybe fifty gains plus or tier sixes. Now, well I'll put it this way, I I didn't even use that many boosters, but I recently grinded the tier nine VK in thirty games. And I didn't actually use that much of it. I didn't really use all the resources that were available to me. I think you can easily grind some tier 9s in under 20 games these days so the grind factor of World of Tanks has changed the uh, and the amount of credits you can grind in a set period of time has gone up a lot more so back in the day this thing was mint because it had 248 millimeters of penetration which was more than most tier 8 tech tree tanks back then let alone now, that is still quite a decent number now, and you've got 297 of APCR, which again, is still really good now. The problem is with the T-34, is that it's slow, and the armour isn't great. You've got guns like this on defenders and, and, up, and other tanks now, that have a, a much better platform. So that's why the T-34 has fallen off a little bit. Don't get me wrong, it can still perform. But just look at the um, other American Tier 8 premiums that you can buy now. There's the Renegade, there's the Patriot, and there's the recently introduced T-77. You've got to say, no, I don't want all those tanks. I want a T-34. It doesn't really ring a bell now, does it? Not as much as it used to. So yeah, that's my three cents on the t 34 this guy's about to bounce on me there you go <laughs> this game's been pretty decent like <sighs> there wasn't really any overpowered premiums on the enemy team for me to fight uh, well i'm looking at two brass now now i'm regretting saying that uh, i'd love the brass but i don't like fighting it <laughs> it's a fantastic tank but it's a pain in the backside at the same time also, one thing about the T-34, it's got six crew, and all American heavies over tier 8 have four or five. 
So it's not even a really good crew trainer for the T1025 or T57. The crew I use for this, it's my most experienced crew, and it's a T32 crew. <laughs> oh dear, I'm such a pleb. Yeah, that Barask, like, he can do not far off as much damage as I can, but look at that platform. He got 60 kph. Fair enough, the aiming time on it is an absolute aid, but the aiming time on this isn't great either. And now, is this charity going to poke? No, he's not. Is he? Come on. Come on. I'm on really low health. He just needs a Hess shell, to be honest, to be able to go through me. Can we uh, pick up? Oh, that was a meaty shell from the artillery. Got a nice bit of assistance right there. I don't like the position that you does. That was a nice shot. Looped it over the courts of the IS-22. That's another thing as well. Double barrels. It's a... The double barrel does pretty much the same alpha in two shots. In, in one load as well. Jesus, this tank has fallen so much off. Like, don't buy this thing now if you're... If you're a new gamer, while well, the tanks gamer in 2020, avoid this thing. Don't buy it. Like when I when I purchased this thing, I was starting college. I had no money, and I just wanted a premium that would be competitive and fun to play. Well, I'll say fun to play, competitive and make a shit ton of credits. This was it. My this was my second tier eight premium after the KV5, and. uh yeah, I've played 1,500 games in there, which shows how much I needed it back in the day. It's carried my account, certainly. And are we going to pick up the artillery? Are we? We're going to pick it up? Come on. Aw, Lansing. You're not very fun, dude, are you? Anyway, that's the game in the T-34. And, well, yeah. It was a pretty... I wouldn't say impressive, but it showcased the T-34 for what it was. We made a load of credits. We made a load of experience as well. And it's nice to go back to tanks that were quite important to your account five or six years ago. And still be able to do well in them. You kind of struggle these days with the i6 and the KV-5 because there's just so much premium being fired. And... In my opinion, special matchmaking tanks, especially the ones at tier 8, they just feel kind of mediocre now. So yeah, that's my two cents on the TFA 4. I hope you guys enjoyed today's replay. Give it a like and a subscribe if you guys want to as well. And I'll see you on the next one.